We're now witnessing the birth pangs of a sexual reformation. The fallout from the sex abuse scandals that have plagued the entertainment industry, politics, and are now spreading throughout society as a whole, is being hijacked by the far left, cultural Marxists, feminists, and social justice warriors to whip up more misandry and create more gender division. Third wave feminism has been largely discredited over the past five years. Just 18% of women in the US now identify as feminist even less in the UK. And it's obvious why. Now that rights which actual feminists fought for a hundred years ago have been achieved, they're left with what? Making sourdough bread out of their vaginal yeast. Yeah, really. While it's sorely needed in the Islamic world, the West needs feminism like a fish needs a bicycle. Which is why third wave feminists and social justice warriors need to constantly invent or hijack new outrages to push their primary narrative hating men. Which is why they're now hijacking the moral panic surrounding the sex abuse scandal in a desperate effort to resurrect the failed ideology of third wave feminism. As part of a catastrophically damaging plan to impose a new onerous form of sexual puritanism. The preeminence of innocent until proven guilty is being jettisoned. Now, mere accusation alone is enough to ruin someone's career. Do you understand how dangerous that is? Roy Moore has vehemently denied the allegations against him, but to the baying mob, allegations are all that's required to pass judgment. Now don't get me wrong, if sexual abuse is admitted or proven, these people should be punished to the full extent of the law. And as my regular viewers will know, I've been the most vehement out of anyone calling for Hollywood and political pedo rings to be exposed. But trial by social media mob outrage isn't justice, and it sets a horrific precedent. Everything is being conflated to the point where making a pass at a woman is placed in the same context as actual sexual assault. As Laura Prendergast writes in The Spectator, women are jumping on the hashtag MeToo bandwagon so they can smother themselves in attention-seeking victimhood. Not because they're actual victims, but in one case, because a man looked at them. Another storm was whipped up over Adam Sandler touching a woman's knee on a talk show. So, so I, I took my parents, just like you. <laughs> I took my parents. And I in another instance, an MP was outed after he called a woman attractive, intelligent, and charming. Another case involved Michael Fallon trying to kiss a woman. No. There's a world of difference between looking at someone, complimenting them, trying to kiss them, trying to touch them on the knee, and raping them. Big difference. As a result of the comparatively innocuous allegations against him, Carl Sargent committed suicide. ...was found dead yesterday, just a few days after he was dismissed from his post as Cabinet Secretary for Communities and Children. The family wished to disclose the fact that Carl maintained his innocence and he categorically denied any wrongdoing. The distress of not being able to defend himself properly against these unspecified allegations meant he was not afforded common courtesy, decency, or natural justice. You can't make the cost of sexual interest not being reciprocated, the complete ruination of a man's career, his reputation, and even his life. You can't brand someone who sent a risque text or made a clumsy advance a pervert or a molester. There has to be a clear distinction between that and actual sexual assault. There has to be an understanding that accusation alone isn't proof. We have to put a check on this cult of instantly believing the accuser without any regard for evidence. Any woman who reports an assault should be heard and believed. The new feminist crusade is about indoctrinating women to advocate victimhood rather than equality. The hysteria of widespread sexual assault is moving us back to a chaperone culture, a modesty culture. From proposals to segregate trains, to banning scantily clad women in advertisements, to modesty wear on catwalks. The irony is that we're moving closer to how Islamic societies treat women. We're mimicking the most misogynistic places on earth. And what pisses me off the most is that these same feminists now hijacking this scandal to legitimise their crusade against straight white men have for years now ignored the fact that we're importing a real rape culture in the form of mass Islamic immigration. A policy that has resulted in women being molested en masse on numerous different occasions. Cologne, Germany 
where large crowds of what police describe as Arab men began sexually assaulting terrified young women. Dozens of men surrounded her and her female friends, touching them everywhere. Sex attacks by migrants against women in multiple European countries are skyrocketing. What did feminists have to say about that? Nothing. In Cologne, feminists responded to the mass molestation of women by migrants on New Year's Eve 2015 by visiting the local migrant centre and handing out roses. Something sinister is happening. Whereas the rules and dogma of sexual morality were once enforced by religious groups, they're now being enforced by feminists. This is a sexual counter-revolution, and sex-negative feminists are the new Puritans. Young men in the West have already had their confidence decimated by years of being hectored about toxic masculinity. Years of lies and smears about a college rape culture that was completely exaggerated. Many young men are now growing up terrified of even approaching women for fear of being seen as predatory. This actually serves to fuel the online hookup culture where mindless sex is understood as the common outcome, but it's ultimately disastrous for stable, strong, long-lasting relationships. Men are being lectured like little boys born with original sin about what behaviours are acceptable. Case in point, this article, 20 things men can do right the fuck now to support women beyond just literally ceasing to sexually harass us. This feminist just brazenly exploits the whole Me Too hashtag outpouring to demand all men become deranged social justice warriors to make up for it. Support abortion. Shut up. Stop watching non-ethical porn. Support Black Lives Matter. Don't use pejorative terms like SJW and feminazi. This is what I'm talking about. You don't want to be like all those evil sexual abusers, do you? Oh, well, you better sign on to all my demented far-left political beliefs then. No. Go fuck yourself, that's not gonna happen. As Douglas Murray writes, this isn't a guide to helping men, it's a manifesto for torturing them. Feminist Lindy West was given a platform by the New York Times to make the same twisted argument. Men are evil and sexist and they need to repent by embracing all my political viewpoints. Men 1963 to 2016, why are feminists such man-haters? Men 2017, oh! You see what they're trying to do, right? Men are being browbeaten into accepting blame for the entirety of the sexual abuse scandal just because they happen to have the same genitals as the abusers. And the question is not, are we sexist? It is, do we know that we are sexist? We are all complicit in this as men. No, all men are not complicit, you collectivist piece of shit. I'm not complicit in Louis C.K. masturbating in front of women. I'm not complicit in Harvey Weinstein groping women. I'm not complicit in Kevin Spacey sexually molesting boys. And neither are all men. The vast majority of men have never done anything like that and never will. Why are all men being blamed when the real blame should lie at the feet of those within these industries who covered up and turned a blind eye to what they knew was going on for decades? And isn't it interesting how we're being told to hyper-focus on certain people and not others? <laughs> Look, when you castigate an entire gender for the actions of a relative few, you don't create more respect for women. You create resentment and more division between the sexes. You create hypocritical, virtue-signalling, soy-boy male feminists who invariably turn out to be abusers of women, having lectured us for years about how misogynistic we are. This whole hysteria is being exploited by postmodernists to resurrect the idea that men, the patriarchy, and ultimately the capitalist system itself, is a perverse architecture of oppression that needs to be torn down. And let's not be naive. Sexual abuse is abhorrent, but if you're gonna claim that some women don't sleep their way to the top, you're a liar. Sorry if that offends you, but it's true. And it doesn't mean that all women are sluts. It's also true that some men abuse their power to bully women into sex, but that doesn't mean that all men are would-be rapists. Fact is, power is an aphrodisiac, and a lot of women throw themselves at powerful men. This leads powerful men to believe that they can just have any woman. And that's when they run into trouble. Men, don't be dicks. Don't shout at women in the streets. Don't invade their personal space. Don't treat them like idiots. Respect women. But equally, don't self-castrate just because you've been told to feel guilty 
by some fat control freak feminist about something Harvey Weinstein did that's got nothing to do with you. Don't adopt far left political views as some twisted form of reparations just to satisfy some autistically screeching social justice warrior. Don't feel ashamed of your masculinity. Don't allow your confidence to be shattered. Don't accept any form of collectivism that demonizes an entire gender for the actions of a relative few. Please click the big red button to subscribe, it really helps me when you do that, and click the bell to allow notifications so you never miss a new video.